I've always loved being outdoors. Ever since I was a small kid, outdoors is where I wanted to be. I wanted to be in nature, playing in the grass, climbing trees, and splashing around in the streams. The blue skies and clear water always feels right, like it's where we're supposed to be. So even now, I try to get out into it as much as I can, playing basketball, volleyball, or even just jogging along the trails. My fondest memories of being in nature was when I went camping to Nanaimo in, with my dad and some friends. We had so much fun riding around the island on tiny on bikes and catching tiny crabs. When we respect the world around us, it could give us some really beautiful moments and memories, those we can hold on to forever. In the last few years, though, me and friends have begun to notice not everyone respects the natural world. We notice that we, humans, are destroying the environment, ruining our forests, and making water dirty and unusable. This is happening because making progress and making money are now more important to us than keeping the most important parts of our world safe. In our desire for growth and advancement, we keep pumping dangerous gases into the air, cutting down trees, and dumping waste and trash into our rivers and oceans. This is just tragic, and it makes me sad. It should make all of us sad. But more than just sad and helpless, it should make us concerned as well. Concerned enough to actually do something about it. Out of all the time I spend outdoors, I see nature mistreated more and more frequently. A few years ago, we traveled to Nanaimo on a sailboat. It was a beautiful day. The skies were blue, and the wind was cool and refreshing. But when I looked at the water, I noticed that there's a strange rainbow glow to it. I was quite confused. I when I asked my dad what it was, he told me it was oil. Most probably from a small boat, but possibly a spill from a larger one. A few months later, on another trip, when we went kayaking, we saw oil on the lake on the water as well. It was everywhere. It's more rampant than we think. Water pollution is a huge problem, and it impacts all living things. Not only do we rely on fresh water for drinking and many other activities in our daily lives, it's where many living creatures make their home. Seeing oil spill in the water and seeing sea lions swimming in these polluted waters, all covered in oil, made me really concerned. Because of what humans have done, they're forced to live in a habitat that is dangerous and poisonous to them. I'm worried that if we don't fix it, and fix it soon, we begin to lose all of the wonderful creatures that make nature so special. Climate change is a threat we can't deny. Global warming is melting glaciers, causing sea levels to rise, and flooding low-lying lands. The warming temperature is also heating up our oceans, causing coral reefs to die and threatening many marine animals. And when we add water pollution to the problems the oceans are facing, the animals don't stand a chance. We don't stand a chance. Water pollution isn't just a stray straw or plastic bag you see floating around. It is a huge problem that is in all our rivers, streams, oceans, and seas. Many things contribute to water pollution. Sewage, dumping, industrial waste, to name a, and oil spills, to name a few. All these create havoc on marine life. When small fishes eat plastics, they absorb the toxic chemicals that are in the water. They breed a lot less, and die faster. And when the larger fish eat these small ones, they absorb the toxic chemicals too, and the same things happens to them. It's not just the animals that are being affected by water pollution. Human beings are also dying from it. 
When we drink polluted water, bathe in it, or swim in it, all those toxic chemicals get inside us as well, often with alarming health effects. The ocean is a very fragile ecosystem. Any disruption will impact it. And when left unchecked, the whole ecosystem may collapse, leading to alarming consequences. All hope isn't lost though, Although we've done a lot of damage, we can still save the environment if we get together and work hard at it. So, what can we do? What can you and I, who aren't ocean conservationists, marine biologists, or scientists do? What can you and I, who are just average people, but who care a lot about the environment, do? Well, it starts with awareness. Let's talk about it and share on social media. We see a lot of young people online and on social media starting to talk about it too. They have started to use their voices. People like Greta Thunberg has inspired us to stand for what we believe in and speak out. Spreading awareness is the first and most important step in the right direction. Next, let's get everyone involved. Talk to your friends about what is happening around us. Show them examples. Encourage them to compare what it was like 50 years ago or 100 years ago. Knowing that a problem exists is one thing. Seeing before or after pictures and getting the facts and numbers is even more compelling. Finally, we need to just take action. As an individual, as a family, as a school, as a community, let's take action. At our school, we regularly have cleanup drives where a bunch of us, armed with tongs, go around the school grounds, picking up litter and throwing it into the appropriate bin, whether trash, compost, or recycle. I'm sure you know of so many other ways to help reduce your impact on the environment. It's our future and our planet, and we might have a part in saving it, and it might just be the biggest part we'll play in our lives. So please, let's spread awareness. Let's get everyone involved and let's take action. Let's do everything we can to make this world a better place. Let's save our planet and our future, not just for us humans, but for all living creatures and make a world that looks better than the one we started with. Thank you.